Hello everyone, uh, this is Art Aramis, back for another Visual Basic game programming tutorial. Due to popular demand, I've decided to make this video about uh, terrain and object collision. Picking up where we left off from last time, um, I left you with the source code, uh, at least a link to it on uh, YouTube. Our character is completely unaware of his surroundings and doesn't know what objects should be blocking his path. So we're going to try to give him a little bit of intelligence here and have him look ahead so he won't be able to move through objects we do not want him to move through. All right, so we'll jump right into our code here. In the previous video, I had discussed um, adding a third uh, dimension to our map array. Um, this will allow us to store multiple values to each x, y coordinate. So everything between 0 and 100 and 0 and 100 will now also have an additional value that can be stored. Um, and really you could set that to any value you wanted. You know, if you wanted 100, since we're never going to loop through it, uh, it won't really slow us down. We're just going to call it explicitly. I'm going to go ahead and break out these uh, map x, y variables so we can give our guys some um, arbitrary starting coordinates. Uh, so I'm just going to say dim that as an integer equals oh, 020. We'll do the same with map y. So essentially he's going to start out on 20, 20 of our map grid. And the next thing we'll do is set up some uh, character variables. I'm just going to leave myself a note. Call those guy variables. And I failed to take one thing into account here. Uh, this is not the character's actual starting coordinates because he's actually in the middle of the screen. This is where it's going to start drawing at the top left corner of the screen. So um, we're going to have to create a character offset uh, because he's actually going to be like, you know, three squares down and three squares in. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll just call this um, guy offset. And integer. And I'll just say three. So we can add that to the actual map when we move. And we're going to need to know what direction we're moving. So I'm going to go ahead and dim um, move direction as a short. Because we're just going to need a few different um, values there. I'll go ahead and set it to 4 for now, and that'll just be standing still. So we'll do something like, you know, 0 equals north, and 1 equals south, and 2 equals west, or something like that. And here is where we'll add our character's world position. So we'll just say guy x is integer equals map y oh, actually sorry map x plus guy offset so we'll have 20 and 3 so it'll essentially uh, do 23 times 50 we will do the same for his y coordinate Sorry for breathing so loud into the microphone here. I just got done having a pretty nasty cold, so. And I can't type today. So before we do anything else, we should probably um, go down through our code and find all the places where um, adding this third dimension to our variable broke it. Anywhere that was calling that map variable is now going to have errors. So we'll go ahead. And what we're going to do is always set the first value, which is 0, of that third um, 
dimension that's always going to be zero for a tile okay and then if we use one we can use the um, that dimension to add another value for a blocking or something like that hope that's clear um, so essentially for example uh, these are where we've populated our tiles go ahead set all these to zero because it's always the zero that's going to store the tile value so two four two five zero is not the same as two four two five one so you can store different values in each one of those sets um, zero will always be our map tiles okay any value above that can be whatever we want it to be I think I still have a couple of those down here whoops so when we get our source rectangle it's always going to be at map X Y and 0 and that's going to tell it that it's a tile okay so now we can set other values to the other stuff and just to be clear here um, the reason I'm using an explicit zero here instead of a variable is because we're not actually we're not looping through this one ever it's always going to be zero because of that and we don't want it to change the X and the Y have to be dynamic they have to change as they're being looped through and sending new values so let's go ahead and try out that new dimension um, say we want a grass tile to be um, passable always so what we'll do is we'll say we'll go ahead and set the value of map x y 1 so it's no longer a tile now it's a passing value to 0 okay and we'll just store like a, a boolean value a 0 or a 1 to this 1 and that way we can check against that to see if it's blocked or not so I could come down here and say map x y 1 equals 1 in a boolean 0 is false 1 is true so even though we're even though this is actually an integer value that it recognizes uh, visual basic will of course recognize these zeros and ones as trues and false so uh, we're kind of shortcutting the system here so I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for mountains um, say at coordinates x y in the one dimension I'm going to make Anything that's 1 will be blocked, will be true. Anything that's 0 will be passable or false. And I'll explain that in greater detail as we go along here. So as you can see, at the same time that we're getting our source rectangles for our tile map, we're also setting a value for those tiles to be passed or passable or blocked thus creating a collision or rather a simple collision detection system so what we'll need to do next is actually create the function to check the tiles um, one value uh, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and do a private <coughs> function is blocked and we'll need to know the, the direction we're looking so we'll say by val uh, dir as a short because it's never going to be more than like four possible values as a boolean so we're going to return a true false value with this um, we'll go ahead and just do this dim uh, boolean blocked as boolean and we'll just say false is the default value and we'll return the value bl blocked 
So now we need to evaluate it. So let's do this. We'll say select case direction. Uh, in case the direction is zero or west. And we'll do a case direction is one or east. Our case direction is two north. Case direction whoops, <laughs> is three. Let's say that south. Right. What did I do there? Whoops. I'm losing my mind today. I'm just totally out of it. <laughs> All right. So to capture the west block value. We're going to say BL blocked equals map the guy's um, x coordinate minus one, oops, because it's going to be toward the edge of the screen, and the guy's y coordinate, whatever it is, and one. And so what we'll get is either a zero and a one based upon the tile that he's standing upon. So if it's grass, he's going to get a zero. And if it's a tree or a mountain, he'll get a one, which will be blocked. So this is going to be BL blocked um, equals zero or passable, right? If it's grass. So I'll just copy and paste this to save a little time because I'm moving kind of slowly here. This is going to be just the opposite. And this will be guy. Why? Oops, sorry. I want to check his y coordinates if he's moving north. So this will always come back true or false. Beautiful. All right, so let's go ahead and try putting this into action and see if we can uh, get the guy to not walk through trees. <laughs> um, this is going to be done with our key press events. Um, number A is going to be west, east. W is north and south. So <clears throat> we're going to have to check those directions. So we'll say if is blocked, zero is what we set for west, right? So we're going to say if is blocked, west is false, then allow that guy to move. All right. Now, one thing's going to have to happen uh, before he will check this properly. Uh, we have to, every time we press a button, we have to update his position. Otherwise, uh, the map's going to keep moving around, uh, but his position will not be updated. So he won't know what's in front of him or not. Uh, what is or is not in front of him. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <clears throat> to do this, we will say guy x will update his position with uh, maps position. Map x changes. Guy x changes. Got to remember our our guy offset. Um, we have to do the same thing for guy y. Now this guy offset, you know, is not done well. Uh, realistically, a lot of people will not have a perfectly square map, so you may have to do a guy offset X and a guy offset Y. Just something to keep in mind uh, if your map is not perfectly square.
and that value may change depending on how large it is. You might not want them over three tiles, you might want them over five tiles. So Anyway, let's go ahead and give this a shot and see what happens. If it works properly <clears throat> and we move west, we should not be able to walk through anything that is blocked or has a one value. And those mountains <coughs> and trees have a one value. So we'll walk north, walk right through the tree. But if we walk west, look at that. I can't move through that tree anymore. What if I try going through that one? Nope. Oh, he is suddenly very aware of his surroundings. <coughs> can't walk through that mountain either but if I go east I sure can so we can fix that really quickly and easily just apply these same bits of code to the other ones it is blocked one was east so if that's false then allow him to pass same thing for these other ones and copy, speed things up here. So this time I want two. And if south, that's going to be my last value, three. And if, <coughs> let's try this out. I will walk around, can't walk that way. Can't walk east, can't walk west. Try going south of the mountain, can't do it. Oh, I'm sorry, I had that off the screen. <laughs> um, yeah, can't walk north through it, can't walk west through it, can't walk south, can't walk east. We're good to go. There you go, you've got simple object collision detection your landscapes and you can add as many different tiles as you want and apply zeros or ones to those respectively and uh, it should work beautifully um, ultimately you could also do the same thing you know if you wanted to create NPCs or other objects that you place on the map afterward uh, you could apply the same uh, sort of logic to those and just evaluate them so <clears throat> um, Actual object collision is probably a bit different because you would be, you know, maybe watching for something coming at your character from the sides of the screen. Then it's then it's just a path intersection. You know, when something hits his coordinate, um, you know, you fire an event, say, oh, he's been hit, that sort of thing. So um, the logic's not terribly difficult to figure out there. So anyway, I hope this has been helpful for you. Um, my next tutorial will probably be uh, about uh, doing a better game loop somewhere, something we could use to, um, you know, check how many frames per second or ticks per second we're getting. Uh, normally, you wouldn't want to use the paint event like we've been doing here, uh, which only fires when there's a screen redraw or something. So, anyways, I'll leave you with that for now and go rest my voice here. <laughs> Uh, thanks for viewing this, and I will leave the source code that's been updated. Um, I'll leave a link to it at the on the information part down below the video there on YouTube. So uh, take care and have a good night. Bye.